Well, what if I told you that JT Daniels was considered the number three quarterback in the SEC going into the 2021 season? Would that surprise you? Well, that's what Athlon has it as, which was interesting. You know, they certainly could be right. We don't know. But they had a couple of guys in front of JT, one being the Alabama quarterback Bryce Young, who went went to modern day, which is the same exact high school that JT Daniels went to. They have him as the number two quarterback, the uh, SEC second team guy, and Matt Corral also in front of JT Daniels. He is considered the number one. He is the first team preseason all SEC. Curious, I mean, listen, uh, Matt Corral's got some serious stats. All these guys uh, from California, nevertheless, if I'm not mistaken, Southern California, all in the uh, sort of LA area, um, Matt Corral can chunk it around pretty good. I mean, last year he had 3,000 uh, yards, uh, a lot of interceptions, 14 interceptions. But, um, you know, Bryce Young being put in front of JT Daniels is interesting to me because Bryce um, has only got, what is that, 22 total attempts in the SEC? I mean, or just period? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It might be right. I guess what I'm saying is, it is interesting to see that, um, you know, because that is projecting for sure. Um, and if we're projecting, uh, then you know, I'm trying to think of guys who could really come in and be gifted players immediately. You know, at Georgia, would you have Mitchell as a first, you know, first team SEC player um, because he could be at wide receiver. I, I would not put him there right away, um, but the way he was playing at G-Day, you know, he would have the potential to be an all-SEC player. He's certainly not on that list right now. Uh, I said first team, and that would be very hard to pull off, but if this is only about projections, um, you know, I don't know. I, I just To me, it is interesting that you would have, um, not necessarily have Matt Corral over Daniels, but Bryce Young with 22 attempts, um, yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, you know, he never had a game where he completed more than five passes. So I don't really know how you could stick him at number two. Now, you look at Daniels, um, and people say, well, he's got in, it's incomplete with Daniels. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I certainly don't disagree with that uh, notion. But um, a guy who's thrown one touchdown... Um, you know, 13 total completions, that's not a lot to go on. So there are going to be people who are like really fired up about this and so forth, but these are preseason, you know, things. And um, they're, it's just kind of what it is. It's for people to talk about. You know, you've got, you know, got, I mean, I would have Tank Bigsby as my number one running or first team running back over, the kid from South Carolina. Um, so there are some there are some ones on here that I'm not sure I you know really completely agree with, but um, that definitely did jump out to me because in this league, um, in in this league, there are so many good players. It's just not a great year for returning quarterbacks, though. I mean, when you start talking about in years gone by when you would have Aaron Murray, J, uh, Aaron Murray, Johnny Manziel, um, Zach Mettenberger. I mean, these guys were all coming back. Um, this is not that kind of year. And, you're, and your fourth team guy for quarterback is Emory Jones. He might not even be the starting quarterback at Florida by the time they play Georgia. So, you know, I, I don't know. But I, this is kind of what we do in the offseason. Athlon's a good publication, but um, this was a curious pick to me because when you, you know, Daniels really did prove himself, I feel like, at the end of that season. I mean, when you think about the Mississippi State game and throwing for 400-something yards, that's really impressive. Um, you know, Bryce Young, who could be the best quarterback this year in the league, didn't have a game where he threw for more than 50 yard, 54 yards. Well, people say, well, you know, Mac Jones is doing it. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. Um, you know, what would it be if, uh, you know, if Bryce Young were playing the whole year this past year? We don't know. He didn't beat Mac Jones out. Obviously, there was a reason why. 
what would be the case if uh, you know if JT Daniels were healthy uh, at the beginning of the season? Would he have been a guy that had three thousand yards like Matt Corral? I mean, you look at Corral really throwing it all over the place, but he's certainly a system guy. Um, you know, Lane Kiffin and them are throwing it all over the place. I'm trying to see where. You know, Corral had a game under 200 yards. He had, had one game under 200 yards this past year, and that was the loss to Auburn. He had 154 yards. Every other game was over 200, and the bulk of them were over 300 yards. I mean, all but three games that he played in were over 300 yards, uh, passing or more. So, you know, he didn't do that against LSU. He did not do that against Auburn. He did not do that against Arkansas, but against the Gators, almost 400 yards. Kentucky, 320. Alabama, 365. Uh, Vanderbilt, 412 yards against poor Carolina, 513 yards. Mississippi State, 384. You know, and then against Illinois, Indiana, whatever they are, it doesn't matter because Ole Miss whipped them, uh, 342 yards. The other, the other thing about Corral, and this is why. You know, I think if you want to make the case that he's the, the, the best returning quarterback in the league, I think you've got a very good case. You know, it's nothing for him to go for 50 yards rushing. JT Daniels is never going to do that. I mean, he went for 158 yards rushing against LSU. He went for 50 against the Gators, 50 against uh, UK, 88 against Auburn, 158 against LSU. That's a crass crazy, you know. He averaged a little shy of 50 yards rushing. I mean, that is a significant number for a quarterback, because of course they're getting sacked, or at times they're getting sacked. Um, a quarterback has a 27-yard run or a 24-yard run, that's a quarter of the field. So I get that Corral is the one. The question is, do you think it's right for Daniels to be the three? Did he do more for you? And do you think it's right for Emory Jones to be the four? I think you're seeing right now in college football that you know you had some really good quarterbacks this past year. Justin, Trevor, Mac Jones, uh, you know Kyle Trask, the the guy at BYU, uh, Zach Wilson, uh, the kid at NC State, or North Dakota State. Um, they had some really good players at quarterback specifically. The league is showing right now, if Emory Jones is your four, you know, you got a little bit of ways to go in terms of quarterbacks. Now you could see some getting better there, but even you know like. At Clemson, at least they have a replacement for Trevor Lawrence. Um, a lot, you know, I don't know if Emory's a great answer um, at at Florida. You look at uh, Texas A&M, you know, do they have an answer there? Um, you know, there, there's a, a lot of older quarterbacks are gone now. Ian Book at Notre Dame. Um, so, I, I don't know. But um, this really is a transitional year in the league for quarterbacks, I, I'm not sure I thought I'd see JT Daniels as the three. What do you think? Tell me down below. We'll talk to you about it over on Dog Post.